A cylinder contains one liter of air at room temperature, uh, 300 Kelvin atmospheric pressure 10 to the fifth. At one end of the cylinder, we have a massless piston whose surface area is this. Suppose you push the piston very suddenly. Um, very suddenly, that means that's a key word for uh, an adiabatic compression. This guy here means we have adiabatic compression, meaning there is no exchange of heat between the surrounding and the system. Okay, exerting a force of thousand newton, the piston moves only one milliliter millimeter before it's stopped by some barrier. How much work have you done on the system? okay so uh, as you know work is equal to the integral of f dx we have a constant force here so from x1 to x2 uh, <clears throat> uh, we have a constant force of 2000 newtons so this would be 2000 uh, dx from uh, we're moving by one milliliter millimeter so we're going from 0 to 0 0.001 meters and of course this is gonna get us the work to be 2000 integral of dx is x evaluated from 0 to 0 0.001 will just give us 0 0.001 and this will be um, 1 2 3 uh, 2 joules so this is in newtons, this is in meters. Uh, we will get newton meters. So that means the work will equal to two joules. We've done two joules worth of work on the system. Okay, for part B, it says how much heat has been added to the gas? Well, again, uh, this is an adiabatic process. And since there's no exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding, uh, because this is a fast compression, so that's because we have a fast compression, as we've learned before and in this chapter as well, uh, Q has to equal zero. Assuming that all the energy added uh, goes into the gas, not the piston or the cylinder walls, how much does the internal energy by how much does the internal energy of the gas increase okay so here we could use the first law of thermodynamics uh, that says um, uh, du the change in the internal energy will be the sum of the heat being absorbed by the system plus the work done uh, well, uh, the Q is zero, so this is gonna be zero plus the work plus two joules. So that means du will equal to two joules. So the internal energy increases um, by two joules as we did two joules of work uh, on the system okay part d uh, use the thermodynamic identity to calculate the change in the entropy of the gas once it has reached equilibrium okay so as you guys know the uh, we could use the thermodynamic identity that says uh, uh, ds we can incorporate all this change into the term uh, thermodynamic identity that says du equal tds minus pdv minus pdv of course we have a more general thermodynamic identity towards the end of the section 
uh, that would include the chemical potential however uh, here we don't need to include the chemical potential because we don't have any change in the number of molecules so it's safe to use this special version of the thermodynamic identity and um, to account for the change in entropy change in entropy is ds so I need to solve for ds so ds would be du plus p dv divided by uh, the temperature okay and uh, uh, what is PDV here so now we know that the volume changes by uh, uh, the area so it, it collapsed by um, an amount of uh, one millimeter so that's 10 to the minus 3 and uh, we have the surface area so the surface area of course doesn't change only the length changes so dv would be uh, the area times dx so this would be 0 0.01 meter squared times one millimeter which is uh, 0 0.001 meters so we would get what's this one two three four five one times ten to the minus five meter cube and so now plugging this in to find the change in entropy we will get du which is two joules plus uh, pressure uh, the pressure is just the atmospheric pressure uh, which is 10 to the fifth pascals uh, newtons per meter square times dv will give us uh, newtons uh, meters which is joules so 1 times 10 to the minus 5 all divided by the temperature assuming that there hasn't been a change in the temperature before and after the compression which is 300 Kelvin and uh, plugging this in we would get a change in entropy to be uh, of course will be joules per Kelvin because here on top we have joules and in the denominator we have Kelvin so 2 uh, oh uh, one second this is going to be uh, the change in volume is actually negative because uh, uh, the, we push the piston uh, inwards so the piston moves uh, one millimeter so this is compression so this would have to be minus because there's a minus sign here so this is a minus so we get uh, the change in entropy to be 0 0.00333 joules per cup uh, this concludes this problem